I'm Mike Quackenbush. This is Till We Make It. And today I want to jump right inside a recent online seminar I happened to do very recently on the topic of getting an audition or tryout. It could also be applied to job interviews. This piece, I think, might be relevant to you. Is there anything wrong with having great size as a professional wrestler? No, there is not. If you got great height or weight, could that be seen as a plus? Absolutely. But if you consider for a moment that your long-term goal might be trying to try out for a major organization, think about how many jobs exist at that very top level, how much product they each have to ship. And what do I mean about the product? I mean, how many hours of television do they have to produce each and every week. They're going to need people of all shapes and sizes if they want to fill up all those hours with unique and marketable characters. I think there was a time when being of a certain weight or a certain height was exceptionally attractive in professional wrestling. Do I think that's necessarily making it to the top of the list of the criteria that major organizations are probably looking for in potential candidates? No, I do not. I think they're looking for that telegenic appearance, first and foremost. I think underneath that, they're looking at coachability. Can you take direction, turn around, and deliver in the ring? Some places, age is a real factor. Your wrestling ability, do you speak other languages? There's a lot of really important criteria, and none of those, you may notice, are necessarily height and weight. However, can that be a factor in cultivating a certain telegenic appearance? Of course it can be. Is that the only way that you can look good on screen? No, it is not. You will never be able to control what any major organization that could offer you a living wage under a contract to perform as a professional wrestler is looking for. You won't know what they're casting for. What does their TV show need six months from now? Only they know that. You may not know that walking into the audition. Don't obsess on the parts of the job that you cannot control. What you do need to focus on are the parts of the job you can control. Can you cultivate for yourself a stronger telegenic appearance? You bet you can. And make sure that when you go to that audition, when you are finally seen, whether you go to a cold call, a tryout camp, some other type of job interview for one of these gigs, that you show up in the very best shape of your entire career. I want you to show up to this feeling as confident as you possibly can be in your ability to actually get the job. And nothing is gonna put you in that frame of mind better than knowing I am walking out in the best shape of my entire wrestling career. Nudge that boulder toward the objective of being in the most telegenic shape of your entire wrestling career. Now I'm not saying height and weight are no factor in that whatsoever, but what I'm saying is there are a lot of other factors and the era in which the height or weight of a wrestler was seen as exceptionally valuable, I think that era has passed us by. Look at the performers that are out there on national level television products being shipped by sports entertainment companies, and you will see performers of all shapes and sizes. You will never know what it is that they need next. You may never know why they hire you or they pass on you, but you can always control the mindset that you show up in be confident and know that you are as prepared as possible to meet this challenge and show up in the very best shape of your career so that you are filled with the confidence and you know you can go out there and perform. Think about what all that criteria is. I don't think this is very likely to change in the next 10 years. I think telegenic appearance, coachability, leaning toward a younger age, having some professional wrestling experience, and multilingualism with an especial asterisk right next to Mandarin as being the language that is most desirable as China's economy continues to grow and that marketplace becomes more and more important to any wrestling organization that wants to increase their international footprint. Look at those criteria and ask yourself right now, if I possess none of these attributes or skills, what can I do to start acquiring them? Given there are some you just can't affect, can you reverse time? Can you make yourself younger? No, but well, could you make yourself have a better telegenic appearance? You bet. Could you increase the likelihood of being hired because you have the skill of speaking Mandarin? 
you bet. Maybe it's time to go and grab one of those online programs and start learning it tonight. But any of these attributes developed to a high enough level will give you a leg up at any kind of job interview, tryout, camp, audition, or anything else in the realm of professional wrestling. Because this is the set that the employers out there are looking for right now. And it's up to you to go out there, grab that. See it as a goal, as a destination for yourself that you may not reach today, you may not reach it this week, or even this month. But if you know it is ultimately your objective in professional wrestling to earn a living wage under contract for a major organization, this is the skill set you got to look at very seriously. You may have other skills, but if they're not on this list, it probably won't serve you well when that audition finally comes.